welcome to today's lecture with a new topic utilization of dairy byproducts so we have so far discussed about the processing of important dairy products like cream butter cheese ice cream ghee khoa etc whenever we are processing these products we get something as byproduct so today we will discuss about them first we will discuss what are those by products and their composition and then we will discuss briefly about their possibilities to make different products from them and then we will discuss little details about the preparation of casein from skim milk with different variety and details and then we will discuss about the utilization of whey which comes from cheese or channa or paneer making process from which we can make whey protein concentrate and then finally we will discuss about the preparation of lactose which is again prepared from the whey first we will see the definition of by product a dairy by product may be defined as a product of commercial value produced during the manufacture of main product but when we say simply by product means anything which we get in the process of making something main product however what is currently a by product may become the main product in the future because of the change of use change of pattern change of consumption sometime the by product can become the main product also here we can see the list of main product and by product from the dairy industry like when we make cream we get the skim milk as by product when we make butter we get the butter milk or sometime lassi due to different desi method of making butter then preparation of ghee we will get ghee residue as a by product and from the channa and paneer that is the indian product we get whey similarly from cheese we can get whey or sometime we want to make only casein in that process also we can get whey so these are the important by product from the dairy industry which we are going to discuss here we will see the composition of some of the important by products firstly the skim milk it will have 90% water very little fat like 0.1% protein almost full it will be there like 3.6 and lactose up to 5% then butter milk which comes from the butter production again it will have mainly protein 3.4% and lactose 4.5% then lassi sometime it is prepared from curd by adding water and triturating or homogenizing it so here mainly we can get protein 1.4 and lactose 1.2 ghee residue is a by product from ghee that will have a good amount of fat 61% and protein 24.8% and it will have a good amount of as or minerals then channa whey whenever we make channa that is after coagulation the soft coagulum if we separate that is called channa which is used for making rasagulla so here again we will mainly have lactose in the whey 5.1% and little bit of protein that is the whey proteins then cheese whey it is almost similar but here we will have little more protein 0.9% and lactose 4.9% otherwise mostly both the whey it will be watery and then acid casein sometime coagulation is done to prepare the casein that time also we can get whey which may have up to 1% protein and 5% lactose so here mainly i have focused on the availability of protein and lactose in those by products here we are going to now discuss one by one the utilization of different by products and what kind of food products can be made especially from skim milk butter milk whey lassi and ghee residue so first we are going to see the utilization of skim milk the principle of utilization in the left side and what food product we can make in the right side by pasteurization we can make flavored milk by sterilization we can make sterilized flavored milk by fermentation we can make cultured butter milk or acidophilous milk or bulgarian butter milk from the skim milk and by fermentation and concentration means first fermentation there is a concentration means evaporation so here we can get 
concentrated sour skim milk here this is in continuation of utilization of skim milk by concentration that is by evaporation without fermentation here we can make plain condensed skim milk or sweetened condensed skim milk or low lactose condensed skim milk then by drying from the skim milk we can make dried skim milk or skim milk powder which is most commonly available in the market today for different purpose and by coagulation from the skim milk we can make cottage cheese or baker's cheese or sometime gamelost cheese or we can make casein from the skim milk here we will see the utilization of buttermilk by fermentation and concentration we can make condensed buttermilk by drying we can make dried buttermilk and by coagulation we can make soft cheese here we will see about the utilization of whey by fermentation we can make whey beverage or sometime whey wheat or yeast whey then by concentration again by evaporation process we can make plain condensed whey or sweetened condensed whey or whey protein concentrate that is of course need for the drying and then we can make whey paste or sometime we can make lactose so this preparation of whey protein concentrate and lactose we are going to discuss in more details later then by drying we can get dried whey and by coagulation we can make ricotta cheese or mysost cheese or primost cheese so now we will see about lassi it is a by product when we make homemade curd and then preparation of separation of cream by manual churning then the remaining fluid is considered as sometime lassi and when we add ice and seasoning then it becomes a very good beverage similarly ghee residue it is another by product in the ghee making process by processing we can make toffee paste or indigenous sweet meats from this ghee residue now we are going to discuss in more details about the preparation of casein from skim milk in a dairy industry large scale amount of fat is separated from the milk by commercial continuous method by using the centrifugal cream separation so in that in that process large amount of skim milk is produced and that skim milk can be either used for making casein or for making the skim milk powder so preparation of skim milk powder we have already discussed when we were talking about the drying of milk but we will discuss more about casein here and casein can be divided into two category industrial casein and edible casein now we will talk about industrial casein so industrial casein is commonly used for many industry an important utilization of skim milk is in the production of industrial casein which is a non food item because of its widespread demand industrial casein is prepared extensively throughout the world on the basis of coagulating agent used it may be classified into acid casein or rennet casein so we can use acid for coagulation or we can use rennet for coagulation now we will talk about acid casein the casein precipitated by various acids is called acid casein free casein or simply casein on the basis of particular acid used so we can use hydrochloric acid so it is called hydrochloric acid casein similarly sulfuric acid casein nitric acid casein and lactic acid casein now we will see the uses of acid casein so this is coming under industrial casein so it will be used in different industry like adhesive as a glue in the plywood industry in paper coating in paint industry in fiber industry in bristles similarly in the other side the, in the films or leather finishing textile finishing sprayer for insecticides or even as medicine sometime as silver and mercury casein it 
Now we will discuss about Rennet casein. The casein precipitated by Rennet is called Rennet casein. We have discussed it when we were talking about the cheese preparation. Rennet is a crude enzyme prepared from the immature calf stomach. So that Rennet is commonly used for preparation of cheese as a coagulating agent. The uses of Rennet casein is in plastics such as brass bags, buttons, costume jewelry, umbrella handles, etc. As I have mentioned, we will discuss details about manufacture of casein. Here is a flowchart for preparation of acid casein. First is the receiving skim milk, then precipitating by using the acid, then draining and washing, that is the watery parts should be removed after coagulation, then it is filtered and pressing, then milling and spreading, then drying, then grinding, then packaging and storage. So this is the brief flowchart for making acid casein. All these steps I am going to discuss with little more details. So here we will discuss little more details about the preparation of acid casein. As I have told already there is receiving of milk, then calcium caseinate phosphate complex, there is a dissociation of complex and precipitation by the addition of acid. So the acids which are used as a dilution of acid like hydrochloric acid 1 is to 3 to 9 and the sulfuric acid 1 is to 6 to 30. So that's the range in which we can use. The important factors for precipitation is acidity or pH of the solution, then temperature which should be around 35 to 38 degrees Celsius and speed of stirring that is the mixing. So slow speed is better and the precipitation is ideal about 4.7 then it will be the maximum precipitation. So this pH will be very near to the isoelectric pH of casein. In this pH the maximum precipitation happens. Now the next step is draining and washing. So after coagulation draining and washing whey is drained up promptly. So after coagulation the liquid we get that is also a whey and this whey is washed with water with the equal quantity of whey which is removed. So washed at least twice. Washing is done to remove whey proteins, lactose, salts and acid that is from the coagulum maximum amount of whey, lactose and salts should be removed. For this purpose at least two times washing is done with the same volume of whey. Then next step is pressing. This is done to remove as much water as possible because due to washing now there is lot of water. So maximum water should be removed by pressing just like we make paneer. And then moisture level in pressed card is brought to less than 55%. Due to the pressing the moisture level comes to 55%. So we are discussing about acid casein preparation. The next step is milling and spreading. Already we have discussed about pressing in the previous one. So this is milling is done to produce particles of uniform size and surface for drying. Then most important part is drying. So prompt drying is done to prevent spoilage by mold and bacterial action. Drying should not be interrupted till moisture content is reduced to less than 8%. So for this drying purpose, the air is put inside and the inlet air is around 71 to 77 degrees Celsius and outlet air temperature is 52 to 57 degrees Celsius. So this drying is done by passing hot air and then it goes out to the other side. Now the next step is grinding. Before grinding it should be properly cooled as warm casein becomes plastic in grinder and stick to it. So before grinding it should be cool then only it will be pakka hard and easy for grinding. Then next is packaging in which gunny bags lined inside with closely woven cloth or sometimes heavy three ply paper bags with polyethylene liners are used for packaging. Packages should be closed airtight because it is dried, it will absorb moisture from outside. So the polyethylene lining is very important and the ceiling should be airtight so that it will not pick up moisture from outside. And finally storage. 
in a clean dry storage room maintained at room temperature so storage can be at room temperature because the moisture level will be almost around 5% so we are discussing about industrial casing preparation by acid so it is called acid casing and the precautions in this process are strict quality control of raw material that is the skim milk use of standard equipment and technique for production maintenance of strict hygienic conditions of production because that is very very important for storage life and packaging and storage under approved conditions so these are some of the important precautions for preparation of acid casing so now we will discuss about edible casein so edible casein may be defined as casein which has been isolated from skim milk by taking special precautions to ensure its suitability for use in patented food and pharmaceutical preparation so this is the edible casein which is to be prepared with a special care so that it becomes suitable to use in food or in pharmaceuticals now briefly we will discuss about the preparation of edible casein basically the method is similar to preparation of acid casein which we have discussed just now only few special precautions are required for edible casein preparation like precipitation of card at ph 4.1 to 4.3 number 2 at least three separate washings of card in waters of proper ph in the range of 4.1 to 4.3 with a contact time of 15 to 20 minute each so earlier in case of acid casein two washing i have told here there is three washing then last but one washing with hot water that is the washing before the last one should be done with hot water at 71 to 77 degrees celsius which affects pasteurization of card for reducing bacterial count by using the hot water many pathogens can be destroyed and finally last washing should be done with neutral water that is not acidic ph at 41 degree celsius now we will see the uses of edible casein in its original form as sodium caseinate edible casein is used in various food products such as ice cream coffee whiteners whipping powder instant breakfast water binder in sausages so many time in the meat products when we make emulsions this caseinates can be used and also it can be used to prepare protein hydrolysates by making enzymatic or acidic hydrolysis then it has a many other special use here we can see the utilization of whey mainly when we make cheese from milk then we get cheese whey and from this way we can separate the whey protein and the remaining liquid still is having lactose so from that we can make lactose and that lactose has got many use so we are going to discuss more details about the utilization of whey or whey protein preparation and then about the preparation of lactose from the whey now we will discuss the utilization of whey whey is another important by product from dairy industry it is coming from cheese production or it is coming from chana production or even from paneer and sometime when we make casein from skim milk that time also we get the whey so all this whey is a huge amount that firstly we can use it for making different kind of drinks so we can see like dairy type whey beverage either fermented or unfermented sometime fruit flavored beverage along with the whey we can add we can make alcoholic whey beverage or sometimes sports drinks or whey powders when we make whey powders it can be called sometime whey protein concentrate and sometime whey protein isolates or sometime whey protein hydrolyzed so these are the different options for utilizing the whey here we can see from whey different products can be prepared by different methods from the whey we can get demineralized whey we can get demineralized concentrated whey we can get whey protein isolate we can get defatted whey then by ultra filtration we can get defatted whey concentrate and we can get whey protein concentrate which will have protein up to 35 to 85% so we are going to see more details about the preparation of whey protein concentrate 
so here we will discuss little more details about the preparation of whey protein concentrate so we have already discussed the details procedure for making cheese there will be the process of coagulation and after that by draining we get the whey now this way again we will undergo pasteurization then filtration and then evaporation because it has to be concentrated and then there is partial crystallization and then it goes for spray drying so we have discussed recently about the details about the spray drying method from this we can make the powder so that becomes whey protein concentrate and nowadays it has got huge demand in the different industry including in different um, uh, food industry or bakery industry and also it has a huge demand in the sports uh, industry as a protein supplement now we will discuss about the preparation of lactose so this is again coming from whey so as i said when the fat is i mean particularly coagulation is done by acid and heat in case of channa or paneer or even cheese preparation the the major part of lactose which is in solution form still remains with the whey and from which we can make the lactose and whey proteins are also there from which i have already discussed about the preparation of whey protein concentrate those proteins are in soluble form that is the beta lactalbumin and beta lactoglobulin and the lactose it is in solution form so here we can make lactose from the whey and it can be in two forms that is crystalline form or non crystalline form here we will see the important sources of lactose as i mentioned already it is the whey that whey comes from cheese industry then it is from the casein making industry that is hydrochloric acid casein whey that is a very good source for making lactose and also another major source is channa whey so in india large amount of channa is prepared for making sweets especially rasagolla so from the after separating the coagulum the remaining part is whey which can be used for making lactose and also for whey protein concentrate and we can also get large amount of whey from the paneer preparation so this <coughs> lactose can be of three different grades one is crude grade which is the very initial separation and then it can be little better that is the edible grade lactose and when it is further purified and improved then it is usp grade so there are three different category of lactose crude edible and usp grade we will understand the three different grade of lactose the first one is crude grade it is the product obtained in the first stage of the common process of manufacture and contains many impurities then the second grade that is the edible grade it contains less impurities than crude but is below the standards for usp it is suitable for use in infant foods and other food industry and finally the usp grade that is the special grade that grade is obtained by refining the edible grade lactose and meets the highest standard of purity it is used in pharmaceutical industry like in the different kind of pills and tablets we will see the flow chart for manufacture of lactose the steps first is the receiving whey then separation of impurities then evaporation and concentration that is the much of the water should be removed and then crystallization and then again second separation of impurities and then we get the crude lactose now this one further if we dry then we will get the actual lactose crude lactose for packaging so here we can see the right side the lactose which is undergoing drying and milling and then packaging and storage that is for the preparation of crude lactose and in the left side we can see that crude lactose what we have seen previously it has to undergo again special refining then drying and then milling and after that it will undergo packaging and storage that becomes edible or refined lactose now from this there will be further purification and quality impro improvement and that becomes the usp grade lactose here we will see the uses of lactose in the left side it is in multiple different industry 
that is in preparation of humanized milk that is milk as like as human milk then in infant foods in caramels and fudges in pills and tablets that is in the pharmaceutical industry in bakery products that is food industry and in silvering of mirror so in case of mirror backside as you know there is a thick layer prepared that can be done with the lactose in the right side we can see use of lactose mostly in the food industry that is for browning purpose for dispersing agent for topping and icing as a carrier for flavor as color ingredients and also to give body and viscosity so these are the uses of lactose now we are at the end of today's lecture so i will just summarize today we have discussed here about the utilization of dairy by products so by products are those which are obtained in the process of making the main products especially in cream butter cheese channa and paneer and also from ghee industry so these by products are either skim milk or whey so skim milk we can use for making the casein or we can use skim milk powder and in case of whey we can make the whey protein concentrate which has got lot of use either food industry and other industry or we also can make lactose from the whey and that lactose has got use in many industry including food industry so this is briefly about the utilization of dairy by products i have made it very short and simple but this can be a much bigger topic for pg students which i will cover later with more details about each of these portions i have mentioned here thank you